So I don't know if I've talked to you about this before or not, but Soap and Clay Kidlet number one and two, actually, they have learned through their friends how to text from their iPads, even though they don't have like a phone number, right? They're doing it through their email. And so the Kidlets text me. Soap and Clay Kidlet number two, she's real good about it. Like she'll send me a text and then she'll wait for a response. Soap and Clay Kidlet number one, she will send like 14 texts right in a row. Like, mom, can I have a popsicle? Mom, hello, 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 hello. And like before I even have an opportunity to check my messages, I have, I'm just blowing up. And I'm like trying to figure out how to explain to her like the etiquette of texting without, I mean, she's doing it again. Did you hear? I, whatever, it's a thing, it's a process raising tiny humans, really. And that has nothing to do with what we're doing today, but that just happened in my life and I have to go explain to my kid why spamming someone's text messages is not a good idea. But I'll do that after I you know, do the thing with you because this is way more fun. And I will tell you all about what we are doing in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sedzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 120 of 365 days of soap. And today, we are doing the exfoliants. Deep dive into exfoliants. We're going to do six different types of exfoliants from very, very gentle, safe to use on face, to very, very scrubby, please don't put it on your face. And we are going to talk about usage rates. We are going to talk about usage in general, application, the benefits of all the different types of exfoliants, and also what you should do with your oils and your soap solution in general to ensure that the exfoliants you put into the batch don't really tamp that lather down and make it not also awesome and bubbly. Because we want awesome and bubbly, but we also want scrub. So we're gonna talk about all those things while I build my soap sampler exfoliant collection. So you know, Let's get to it. Okay, you might be hearing my phone go off a whole bunch in all of this because Soap and Clay Kid the number one is uh, not, she's unrelenting right now. So there's that. Okay, first up, pumpkin powder. I got all of these exfoliants from Brambleberry, but really you can get these exfoliants wherever you want. It, it doesn't matter, but they had all the ones I wanted to use in stock, so that worked out and coconut shell powder. Now those those are both going to be your very fine grain. There's a hole in the bag. That's great. There's going those are going to be your very fine grain exfoliants, good for face as well as the rest of the body. And then we have jojoba beads. Now, jojoba beads as well as walnut shells are going to be Oh look, there's actually usage rating on that. Half a teaspoon per pound. Yeah, we're not doing that. Okay, now Walnut shells and jojoba beads will both be your medium exfoliant. So maybe okay on the, on, the, on the face? Yeah, okay on the face, but not something that you can do daily. Now, pumice sand and any, any salts are going to be very, very good for whole body exfoliation, especially for your really rough bits, like the bottoms of your feet and all of that jazz. Now, with this particular oil recipe that we're doing, we are looking at 
really upping the coconut oil without it being overly drying. So what I am actually using here is a 60% coconut oil and 40% olive, olive slash canola, whatever, doesn't matter. And anyone who says it does is silly. So that is what we're going to work on because we don't want the lather, we don't want any of these exfoliants to really tamp that lather down and make it you know, more creamy and not nearly as bubbly and fun. And as always, clay goes into every batch and that's what we do. I had someone tell me recently that one of my uh, videos was like they were getting punked because clay and I'm like, dude, I put clay in every single batch of soap I make. So I don't know what you're talking about, but it certainly made me giggle. Thanks for the engagement on my post. Let's go pour these and talk about these exfoliants. Okay, so first up, let's figure out, see if I can remember or maybe see the scale. That would be even better. What amount I am using. Uh, all right, so nine ounces. I'm doing nine ounces of soap batter. And for every nine ounces of soap batter, I am using one half tablespoon, one half tablespoon of each of the exfoliants. Now, this is a nice sweet spot. I can go one half tablespoon. I can go with more exfoliants for sure. And I have done, and I will do so again. But for this one, this is a really good mid range for all exfoliation. Now you see how fine grain this ground pumpkin seed powder is. It's actually a really great exfoliant. That's the scent that's going in, by the way. I'm splitting it amongst the batch. Okay. So it's actually a really great exfoliant for the face specifically because pumpkin seeds have lots of vitamin E in them and it helps out with oil and blemishes and also tightens the pores. So that's fun. That's something great to include into like a face soap for sure. And again, rinse off product, that, that, that. You... We've done this disclaimer before. I can tell you the, the benefits of something without you assuming that, you know, I, but also cosmetic claims can be made too, also as well. And we can, I'm not, I'm not talking about cosmetic labeling right now. I'm not talking about labeling right now. I'm still recovering from the last one. So yes, ground pumpkin seeds, really good gentle exfoliant that can be used all over the body. And this is actually something that can be used multiple times a week, if not daily, depending on your level of exfoliation and your, your skin, really. Some people can really only exfoliate their skin once a week or even once a month, depending on the sensitivity and or the needs, but others do daily exfoliation with no problems whatsoever. This would be one that you could definitely do without any kind of problems. And we, you remember the apricot exfoliant things that like they would sell at, you know, Target or whatever. I forget who made those, but I think they were specifically marketed to use on the face and they had really thick particles. I want to say they had pumice sand in it, not even pumice powder. Pumice powder is another interesting one that you can totally use on your face. And I love doing so along with like bamboo powder. That's another fine grain exfoliant. That's great. Now this coconut shell powder is very cool in that it again helps uh, with you know blackheads and blemishes and all that jazz, but it sort of has a lot of the same properties as activated charcoal, which makes sense because coconuts are where activated charcoal comes from. So we're doing a deep dive on activated charcoal in just a few days. So I'm uh, prepping for all of that and Okay, it's not just in a few days, it's in two weeks. Sorry, sorry, it's on my list, but I've been prepping. So yes, for the coconut shells, again, good for blemishes and pore purging and all that, but it also really, really helps with the texture of your skin by really sloughing away in a very gentle way all of your dead skin. So that's nice, that's very nice. And again, something that is safe enough to use daily and on the face daily, so that's excellent. Now, going back to the apricot scrub thing, not all scrubs are created equal. Not all exfoliants are created equal. And there's a reason why these products, these exfoliants, 
are you know different i mean obviously they're different because of what they are duh but also just the way that the particle is actually created makes it beneficial slash bad depending on where you're using it so for something like the ground pumpkin seed and the coconut shells they are such a thin fine powder that there's not going to be any real irritation or any risk of you know microscopic tears in the skin by using it jojoba bead would again be a mid-range exfoliant but i love these because they are perfectly round little spheres and they mimic the micro bead which is good because we also all went through a phase where we were all using micro bead body wash right and then we find out that it's like pieces of plastic in there that's ending up in the ocean and killing our fish friends and that's messed up jojoba beads are the you know fr friendly alternative to that the fish friendly alternative and they are made from the jojoba wax right like jojoba oil which is not really a, a you get it anyway another interesting thing to look at with all of this is how all the colors get different just based on the exfoliants I'm really hoping it stays the same that stays that way because do you remember how much i struggled with the last um video when i was making little sample packs and i could not like i really went through it trying to figure out what was going to be the right what was the which one was what really and that was not fun because they all ended up kind of being the same color so that sucked now walnut shell powder this is one that you obviously have to be careful with because a lot of people can be allergic oh maybe that's what was in the apricot apricot shell powder or walnut shell I don't know so this is something that you can put in to all over exfoliants but I would be very very careful doing so uh, actually a couple years ago uh, one of the Jenners the car Jenners launched a beauty line or something and they had a walnut exfoliation thing first there is the potential i guess for um allergens walnut nut allergies all that jazz that that could be a thing again as i've said multiple times you are not an allergist so you don't know i don't know it's not my job if someone says they're allergic to walnuts i'm definitely not giving them the scrub because my business is not worth that sale you know but the walnut scrub that one of the kardashians or the jenners or whatever put out a few years ago it was really kind of controversial i guess because you know walnut can be pretty bad for your skin oh it's because it was that that's what it is it's that apricot scrub that had walnuts in it and that thing was brutal to the skin so that is the pumice sand so that's going to be one of your heavy hitters so again going back to and just finishing up with the walnut scrubs there are i don't know a lot of claims on both sides saying that walnuts very because it is beneficial for the skin for sure it has a lot of the same you know vitamins and all that jazz really effective exfoliant but if you go overboard with it you're going to end up with problems that you don't really want as far as microscopic tears to the skin that could cause premature aging and we don't want that pumice sand I'm going to go with same thing. That is an irregularly shaped particle, which means that it has the potential to cause little microscopic tears in your skin, thus aging you faster. Because when your skin tears in a knot... So whenever your skin is damaged, right, the whole idea is you start, your, your body goes into defense mode, like repair mode, and starts essentially creating extra collagen in that area to, you know, heal. Or whatever but from everything that I can tell from estheticians and dermatologists and how the skin works or whatever it has to be kind of a controlled injury otherwise you run the risk of scarring or you know again premature aging because too much uh, little tears so for that reason pumice sand because it's irregular and irregularly shaped particle I would recommend that usage on body 
as well as this salt here, any salt, usage on body and not on your face because no. And really for a salt bar, my favorite place to use a salt bar is going to be on my elbows and my knees and my heels and that little like philia stuff that you can get on the back of your arm. Salt bars and pumice bars are great for that. Also really great for like mechanics and stuff who have really dirty hands from, or gardeners. So these are both great additions for gardener soaps, for mechanic soaps, for, you know, people who do a lot of work with their hands and come in with a lot of gunk on their hands. So that really does help lift all of that dirt and grime and everything away nicely. And because of this 60-40 split of coconut oil and olive oil, there will not be any drying from the skin to the skin after you know doing the exfoliation thing but yeah so that's all six of them they're all going to set up just in open air on the counter overnight and i think we're going to test the lather i'm pretty sure we're testing the lather on all these let's go uh let's go check it out all right i really do hope that i can figure all this out so that is the first one that's the pumpkin seed for sure very tiny little, 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 little tiny particles in there. Very gentle, very lovely, but still a good exfoliating kick. Um, the whole idea of half a teaspoon per pound of oils, I don't even know why you bother because that's not an exfoliating bar at that point. That's just my opinion though. I like a good scrubby bar, so that's just me. Now that would be the coconut shell powder there, definitely. And after that, did we do the jojoba? We did the jojoba next, right? I'm glad that these all ended up being different colors so we don't get confused here. Oh, I'm confusing myself. No, it's the same, it's the same. But some of these, because they've only sat up, you see how soft they are? They only sat up for about, I don't know, 16 hours or so before I decided to pull them out of the mold because I needed to make more. And so they are soft, which is going to make it interesting to actually do a lather test. And then that would be the walnut shell powder. Is that right? Sorry. Yeah, because the ones that are in the pink mold are the salts, right? And so those are the pumice. No, those right there that I'm pulling out right there are the walnut shell. The ones that I was pulling before are the pumice. Okay. God, I just saw these. What is wrong with me? But yeah, so we're going to line them up in the way that makes sense. So that is, <laughs> I love this. I love how I'm having such a hard time. Oh my God. Okay, so we know the one at the end is the salt and that's the pumice because you can see the sand. Right there. Yeah. Oh, yep, those ones. There you go. Christ. This is why you have to label your soaps right away, guys, okay? Not like label, label them because they need to cure, but you need them with a note on them saying exactly what they all are because you're going to forget. You're just going to, but there's the right order. Okay. Awesome. Love that. So first up, we are going to test the pumpkin seed. I'm a disaster. I'm just a disaster. Now you guys won't be able to tell moisture level because you know, you're not, there's no moisture test here, but it's pretty good lather right off the bat for such a fresh bar of soap. I can get behind that and I can tell you, yeah, moisture is good. My skin does not feel drying but it's a nice exfoliation at the end of all of this. So that's good. And the, I was, yeah, that's nice. That actually lathers very similarly to an activated charcoal bar. So that's excellent. And then this third one for the walnut shell, you can definitely feel more abrasion in this. This is where the real like scrubby bits are gonna come into play. And also great lather, that works out really well. Now granted, again, these soaps are again about 16 hours old, so the lather will continue to settle into its own as they continue to lose water weight. And this one would be the jojoba bead, 
which is delightful. It's it's a lovely addition to almost anything. You can put that in scrubs, you can put that in oh, face masks, really. I used to do an exfoliating two-in-one face mask. Loved that thing so much. Three-in-one, actually, because it also moisturized. And then that one is a pumice sand. And then the final is gonna be this, the sea salt. Now, this is the one that's gonna be probably the, the worst lather because the inclusion of salt means that you get much more of a creamier, yeah, it's a, the lather itself is a bit more scant. But those are all the exfoliants and they are awesome. And there you have it, all things exfoliants. And yeah, there is a place for every single type of exfoliant in your line, for sure. And these are just six of them. There are so many other options that you can use for exfoliants. I mean, coffee and loofah and it goes on and on and on for sure, and they're all really, really cool to put into soap. And I, I don't know about you, but I love a scrubby bar. It's one of my most favorite things ever, 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 ever. And so I'm excited that we now have the Exfoliant Collection Sampler Pack available at soapandclay.com if you are so inclined to uh, give people samples of the different types of exfoliants that you know I'm in the mood to do right now. So that's awesome. If you're interested in seeing, you know, what else we do for all the things, you know, the drill, subscribe, bell, whatever. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, Sudzer, did you have fun today? I had fun today. I'm not going to have fun now because I need to go talk to my kid about boundaries. So I'm going to go do that, but I will be back tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.